Welcome to Rich TV. Welcome to Rich TV. What we talk about stocks, cash, charts, limits, red, green, something you ain't never seen. Welcome to Rich TV. Welcome to Rich TV. You can join a group. 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 First things first. KCB, we all about it. That's a roller. That's a score. Ain't no other way around it. Crew the channel from a minor to a major. Yeah, we players in the damn game. Now they want to pay us. You want to advertise your stock? You can come and holler. We got members that are ready to drop all them dollars. Back it up. We can back it up. 20,000 subscribers. Oh my God. You can add it up. Comment below. Getting all the dough. Sell it up. Buy it. We buy it down low. We brought you pivot. We the shit there. What's your decision? Either standing or you sitting. Making so many videos. I'm like, here we go. So many fucking trolls. Damn, I'm like, out of yo. We say it positive. All the members are dope too. If you want to get big money, we can show you. Welcome to Rich TV. Welcome to Rich TV. What we talk about stocks, cash, charts, limits, red, green. Something you ain't never seen. Welcome to Rich TV. Welcome to Rich TV. You can join a group. You can join a group. So, um, Aurora Cannabis, it's going down right now. The indicators are pointing down. This is no joke. Like, this is going down, and it's under $2, which usually, that's not a good sign. The fact that it's down um, 6.8%, and it opened at 211 went as high as 216 and then reverse this short, the short attack continues. And it's a short attack on the company's news, its lawsuits. Now the question is, is this the bottom or will it go back down to the 150 range, which it was just at not too long ago? It was at 150 uh, on January 13th, eight days ago. So the million dollar question is now, do we go down again here? It's the 50-50 play, right? Do we go back down to the 150 zone? Or do we go to the 260 zone? What do you guys think? MYM. I mean, MYM has been just like a lot of stocks just obliterated, right? So... I think that they have a chance to be good, but I think very differently about the sector than I did a year ago or six months ago. Even things have changed so much and you can see that the quality and the caliber of the companies that we're focused on are only the best, the biggest and the best. Everything else is very speculative. Now, it's not to say that you can't make money. There's money to be made everywhere. But the reality is these like this sector, it's like all about trends. And today, for the most part, the trend is red. That's why you see a lot of the companies, not just Aurora, but look, Canopy Growth is down 
it's a trend industry. Everybody goes up and down with the trend. Sundial was up 5% early. They're down now 1%. See the trend is all down? Trend is down. True leave, red. And even stocks that were green earlier are now red, but there are some green. Afria is still green. Oh, no. They are now red, too. Google is green. Shop. Shopify is green. Medmen is green. Barely. Kush bottles. A little bit of green. Visa. Showing some green. GW Pharma showing some green. Tilt. And then there's Valance. I don't know if you guys saw the interview I did with Valance. Neo is definitely looking good. Have you guys taken a look at this one? RTTR. Keep this on your radar, guys. NASDAQ company looking for FDA approval. Stay tuned. <laughs> and then there's Tesla. Oh my goodness, the beautiful thing they call Tesla. 543 smackaroos. Up 6%. Are you serious? And then NEO. NEO up 8%. The Chinese, the Asian Tesla. NEO. Coming back from the dead. And then there's Virgin Galactic Holdings, Inc. Space, S-P-C-E. Flying. IP, a little penny stock that we found. Virtual reality stock. Buy the dips, buy the red. Don't chase green. Vivo Cannabis showing life today up 10%. Ceneva showing life today up 11%. Beyond Meat on Fire up 14%. Wow, that's big. Fuel Cell Energy, F-C-E-L, up 21%. Dixie up 23%. And the big boys of the day, GNPX up 227%, CSS up 99%. Wow. Huge, huge, huge days for a lot of players. And But overall, the markets are down. The markets are down. Everything is red. This is the news and the reason why. This is how far and fast coronavirus has spread through U.S. stocks. Look at this. They are talking about the coronavirus, which started in Asia and is now spreading in America. This is the reason why. The stocks are falling. That's crazy. That's the headline. Wow. Founder of Biggest Hedge Fund says cash is trash with stocks near record highs. He is riding the melt up. Only a disease that could end humanity can hurt the markets. That's how hot the markets have been. It's crazy. That's why the markets are down, guys, in case you were wondering. But regardless, there are still a lot of stocks that are doing quite well, like Beyond Meat. It's just nonstop. And then on the other end, there's Aurora. Aurora 
is at 199.5 now. So they're pushing $2. It doesn't look like they want to stay under $2. Mind you, the MACD is pointing down. The RSI is starting to point up. The last candlestick is a volume candlestick, the green candlestick. So 199 down six point. Well, back to 195. Oh, back to 199. It's bouncing between 199 and 199.5 right now. Scott Norris says, perhaps coronavirus can be helped through CBD, then things will change. It's possible. We are literally watching Aurora trade live. It looks like they're going back to $2 right now. We're at 1.998, 1.995. So... It's looking like it's trying to fight back. People have realized that this is a buying opportunity. Volume's at 34,650,000 shares. Average volume is 29.8 million. So 5 million more shares than average. You just love Cali, eh? I just want to see what happens here with Aurora. Are they going to fall under $2? Or are they going to, oh, back to two bucks. There it is. See that? So Aurora is bouncing around $2. Will it hold $2? Will it fall below $2? Obviously, all the shorters are rejoicing right now because they love the fact that Aurora is falling. And congratulations to the shorters. You guys are winning the war for sure right now. Definitely winning the battle short term on Aurora. Aurora is taking it on the chin. Now the question is, will this continue? The selling pressure is very, very strong here on the MACD. All we're seeing is selling candles. That's a lot of selling pressure. Yeah, it's all selling pressure throughout the whole session. Wow. All selling pressure. There's been no buying pressure. Wow. There's been a couple candlesticks of buying. Three, four, five, seven. So, I don't know. It looks like it's going to stay. Oh, back to two bucks. You thinking about averaging down, Scott? Well, there's two things that are going to happen here. Either we're going to go back down to 150 or we're going to 260. So, what do you guys think? Do you guys think we can get it lower? Or do you think now's the time to load up? Infinite Possibility says, I will never touch ACB ever again. Wow. But you're touching Cali? Doesn't Cali have a skull and bones, bro? One ninety nine two. Are you talking about the Canadian Cali or the U.S. Cali? Because the U.S. Cali has a skull and bones. I won't touch anything with skull and bones. I wouldn't be advising anybody to touch anything with the skull and bones. Ray, you bought Aurora? Holy smokes, man. This thing is crazy. Look how low it is, guys. <laughs> from $10 all the way to the bottom. We are coming up from the bottom. You can see here, we're coming up from the bottom. Man, there's a long ways to go up, man. Long ways to go up.
I mean, I think five bucks is very realistic for Aurora. I mean, these prices are crazy. For for us to get into Aurora now at like two dollars and it goes to five, you make a hundred and fifty percent on your money. The question is, will it go to one fifty, which is the low low? And we're at one ninety nine. Will it go to one fifty? Will it breach one fifty? What do you guys think? Yeah, edibles are just getting started. Yeah, Neo's been on fire. Neo's been on fire, for sure. Neo's having a very, very nice run. They had a nice run when they did their IPO, then they crashed, and now they're making a nice run again. The question is, will they continue? That's the million dollar question. Will they continue? Will they continue? Are you going to ride that momentum train? Yeah, Neo. Flying. You think ACB is going to come up from here? I mean, it hasn't come up for a long, long time. Hit its highs last year in uh, March, March 18th. So 10 months. Since then, it's just been going down, 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 down. Question is, when does this turn around? When do we find the bottom? I think Aurora is dirt cheap. I think Aurora is going to go way higher, but I also think there's a chance it could go to 150, which would be the buying opportunity of the century. To just load up personally. And I remember Rich TV Live is strictly for education, entertainment purposes. Always do your own due diligence. Always do your own research before you invest in anything we talk about here in Rich TV Live. We talk about a lot of stocks here. Some of them are very risky, very speculative. Anything under $5 is a penny stock. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. In the past, Aurora has come up three times over $10. We are clearly at the lowest we have seen since 2017. Okay? There's the evidence right here. 2017 was the last time we've seen it at this range. Or lower. So Aurora has been much higher for years. This is the lowest price and the lowest price action we've seen in years. My opinion is that institutional investors... Hedge funds, retail investors, speculators, shorters are all pouring in. People are going to be putting in calls. People are going to be putting in puts. I think that there's a lot of money to be made on the upside right now. But there's always a chance it could go a little bit lower. So I just showed you guys that there is a very clear indication that it was at 150 not too long ago. So because it was at 150 not too long ago, November 19th to be exact, there's always a chance it could go back to those levels, especially because the shorters right now are on full attack with the lawsuits. If you go to the Aurora Cannabis News, all you see is lawsuits. If I go to bar chart, if I go to bar chart, and I look at Aurora Cannabis, oh, back to two dollars. Oh, one ninety nine five. One ninety nine five.
wow, SPCE is just not stopping, guys. This thing is nuts. These guys want to take people into outer space, to other planets, for 250 grand. You too can see Mars. So it's pretty crazy. Or is it the moon? Is it Mars or the moon? Or both? Either way, these guys are trying to do some crazy stuff. $17.27. It's just been flying off the wagon. Look at this. Wow. November 25th. Oh. It was at, s wow, $6 range. Unbelievable. 688 And now we're at 1729 Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Now the question is, does Aurora stay under $2? It looks as though it's going to. But the question is, who wants to take advantage of these buying opportunities, getting into Aurora at the lowest it's been since 2017? Yvonne Diesel says, Rich, ACB, everyone plays games with to scare people. Yeah, well, they're obviously going after them in uh, the press releases. If I show you guys their press releases, it's just outright ridiculous. It's an onslaught, an absolute onslaught. Now at $2, 88% sell on bar chart. Down 80%. Wow, look at that. Down 80%. Aurora Cannabis. Despite that, up 32% from the bottom. So that's what I'm saying. There is a little bit room to get it maybe a little lower here. But the upside is absolutely tremendous. Because remember, it's 80% down. The upside here to get back to $10 is tremendous. Like from $2 to $10, that's 400%. And then this is what I'm talking about. Like look at their recent stories. Final deadline alert. Aurora Cannabis Inc. Bronstein. Gortz and Grossman LLC reminds investors with losses exceeding 1 million of class action and lead plaintiff deadline. This is an attempt to bankrupt Aurora Cannabis. Like anyone who's lost a million dollars, they have 880,000 investors. ACB final deadline today, Rosen, a top ranked law firm, reminds Aurora Cannabis Inc. investors of important Tuesday deadline in securities class action encourages investors with losses in excess of one million to contact the firm. Wow. Like this is nuts. This is just today. Tuesday, Tuesday. Look at the next one, Tuesday. There's always at least three a day. Haggins Berman National Trial Attorneys alerts Aurora Cannabis investors of today's deadline to move for lead plaintiff. This is the attack on Aurora. It's all their news is losses. All their news is losses. Lawsuits, lawsuits, and more lawsuits. And the markets are red due to the fact that coronavirus has spread through U.S. stocks. It took a deadly virus to take down the markets and the market melt up. The question is, what will it take for Aurora Cannabis to recover? Will it recover? When will it recover? And at what price? Yeah, I know. Yvonne says, Rich, could you imagine when Aurora bought MedRelief and gave the shareholders $3 a share? That was at $40. Wow. Yeah, I don't know how they compensate them. Aurora is fighting between $199 and $2. Wow. This is absolutely incredible. The shorters are winning this battle. Will they win the war? They are attempting to take Aurora down, clearly. 
led by Andrew Left, who personally told me that he was going to make sure that they go to zero. Those were his words. Aurora goes to zero. Clearly, they haven't gone to zero, but they are definitely struggling. The volume in Canada is 7 million shares. The volume in America is approaching 35 million shares. With a high of $13.67 in the last year and a low of $1.95, the question is, does Aurora go lower from here? Or do we see them go higher? In my opinion, I think the upside outweighs the downside. I think there's a very good likelihood we see the stock go back to $10, at least seven. And from these levels, from 260 to seven, you're talking about huge, between you know 150 to 250% returns. Mind you, the downside, I believe, could be as low as $1.95, where they've reached before. Now, they've reached $7 many, many times before. That is very realistic. They've also reached $1.95. It's also very realistic. It reached $1.95 recently on January 13th. Yeah, I don't know why ACB is not fighting back. Gary Bissonette says, why don't the shorters leave the stocks, let it grow, then start the suck on again? Ill pickings right now. Um, because they're one trick pony and they can't short the, uh, the broader markets. So this is an easy target. It's a new sector. There's a lot of legal ramifications. There's a lot of illegal transactions that have been happening and occurring. There's lawsuits throughout the entire sector. So it's an easy target. So typically, a bully will always try to pick a fight with someone that they know that they can win against. They know that they can win this fight against Aurora because Aurora doesn't have the big institutional backing yet that they need to get where they want to go. But it's coming. And the institutions are watching very closely, believe me. And they're probably sitting there just salivating, thinking that they can buy this company at these prices, you know, years into this phenomenon, which is a cannabis stocks revolution. Because an illegal market is now legalizing. And Aurora Cannabis is one of the biggest legal licensed producers in the world. So yes, they've had many ups and downs, but long term, I believe that this company will be way too big to fail and you will see them turn around. Infinite Possibility says, Rich TV Live question, if the ask price is five cents, why can't I sell? Maybe that there's an order ahead of you. You got to look at the level two and I'll bet you that there's an order ahead of you or there may be multiple orders ahead of you at five cents. So you may be forced to lower your, your offer. 4.9 cents or something like that. 4.5 cents. Yeah, they're playing, market makers are playing with the bids and the asks. They're just playing on both sides, making a market. So you can see here, there's uh, more decliners today than advancers due to the coronavirus. 
which is causing a major scare throughout the entire markets. Looking at some of the biggest winners, NEO up 10%, Tesla up 6%, $544 for Tesla, wow. Toyota up 1%, Toyota at $142. Ford up slightly. Some of the big names that we're watching, Kinross is up 3.7%. Roku, one of my picks for January 2020 at $137, up 5%. Looking at some hot ETFs, FXP is up 8%. It's the ultra short China ETF. Let's take a look at the HMJI actually, speaking of short ETFs. Here's the short ETF, guys. If you want to bet against the cannabis sector in Canada, you can buy the HMJI Beta Pro Marijuana Companies Inverse ETF. This is the short ETF. If you believe that the cannabis sector is going to go down, you can make money buying this ETF. You can see it's actually been coming down over the last month. But it is up gr dramatically over the year from $19 to $31. This is the short ETF. Speaking of that, canopy growth is down 3.7%. Aurora looks like it's probably going to finish right around two dollars today. There is 45 minutes until the market close. The question is, will Aurora stay at these levels? Fighting. Fighting. It's a war zone, folks. It's a war zone. It's very risky to short this sector, Sheldon. I agree. But if you're a shorter, what else are you going to do? You're going to just keep shorting the sector because that's what you do. You're going to squeeze as much out of this as you can. That's just the way it goes. And opportunities are everywhere today in the cannabis sector. Labs down 3.77%. Canopy growth down 3.86%. And Aurora down 5% in Canada, 6% in America. We are seeing opportunities everywhere in the cannabis sector. Even Afria, after being up early, is barely green now, just holding on to those gains, but was as high as seven. Oh, there it is. There it is. Caught a cold too, just like that. Caught a cold. Afria caught a cold. Look at that. They red too. Wow, Visa, guys, look at this. Visa just keeps going. The beat just keeps drumming on Visa. My goodness. Guys, if you're paying Visa interest rates, why not make money on Visa? Like, these guys are nonstop. What's going to stop them? What? People are just paying off all their credit card debts for Christmas. What's going to stop them? going to stop Visa? Nothing. You know, Valens is green. Did you guys see my Valens interview, man?
This is Rich here on behalf of Rich TV Live. I'm here with a very special guest. It is Everett, the EVP of Strategy and Investments with Valens Grow Works. How are you doing today? Dude, good. We, and we, we actually just branded to the Valens Company. So we're previously known as the Valens Grow Works, but we just did the Valens Company. New, t new ticker symbol, VLNS. So. And in the US, the ticker symbol? It, it is uh, on the OTCQX, and it's VLNCF. So uh, take a look, and I uh, appreciate you having me. Very good. I'm very excited to have you here. Our community all over the world is very excited about Balance. You guys have been one of the top cannabis companies in 2019. One of the few that actually went up. Okay. Now, what does it look like for Balance in 2020 and beyond? So, so 2020 is really our legalization. If you look at our business model, uh, we focused on the highest quality oil, right? And we are the largest cannabis extraction and white label manufacturing in Canada. And what we've been focused on for the last, since 2012 when we were founded, is launching our, our customers' product, right? And, and with Cannabis 2.0 in December kind of coming online, what, what we have the opportunity in January now is actually to showcase everything we've been working on and all the proprietary technology in-house. So I think this is, uh, last year was everyone else's year of legalization. This is our year of legalization. So excited to get some products on the shelf. I actually live streamed an investor conference you did yesterday. Okay, you guys are aware. Of, you're aware of that conference? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, OTC. Yeah, yeah. So I live streamed that yesterday, and I was listening to the whole thing. And you guys said on the conference that this is really your year, that you're really ramping up for 2020. That's pretty exciting for investors because you guys were, if not the best, one of the best cannabis result companies as far as stock price appreciation in 2019. You guys are profitable. Let's talk about your profit because that's really why I think you guys have done so well. In a sector where there's nobody with profit and everybody's got losses, you guys are li the leaders in profitability. Can you explain what has made you guys so profitable? So, so for us, it's been focused. Like what we wanted to do as a business model is be really good at one thing. And, and we have so many expertise in house on extraction and white label uh, product custom manufacturing uh, that it made sense just to focus on that for our customers. And if you look at it, we have over 100 years of cannabis extraction experience. So. When going into these 2.0 products, it made it made sense to actually make sure that our customers are able to put their best foot forward there, and that focus is really what sets us apart, I think, because uh, we weren't spending a whole bunch of different things. We were saying, how do we reinforce the thing that we're good at today, and we're continuing to do that. And if you look at 2020 now, what we have the opportunity to do is now uh, take that, and 2020 is a pivotal year for us as we get products on on Canada, and the biggest thing is we have to do is execute on our current contracts. We have 11 uh, extraction contracts, 11 white label contracts. A big thing is that our white label contracts has now uh, overcome our extraction only contracts. I saw that, I was really impressed with that because I didn't anticipate that, and then you guys said that you guys are actually getting way more business from your white label side, and essentially said that you guys are the biggest in the world as far as white labeling. So why did you go in that direction? Is it just because you noticed that there was way more profitability? Is that is that the strategy? Yeah, so so we, we ask ourselves every day how we can help our customers, right? And to get more vertically integrated in their platform. And when we're already making uh, different qualities of oil, we have five different types of extraction in-house, which really set us apart. And we have CO2, ethanol or ethyl alcohol, hydrocarbon, which is really the aims of the world, whether it's butane or propane. And then we have solventless and terpene extraction. The reason we have five different types is we literally work backwards on what our a customer wants from a product and say, hey, you want a, a wax or a shatter, we're gonna actually, then we have to use a hydrocarbon extraction. If you just want the fastest way to get to a dislip, uh, CBD dislip, maybe we use ethanol. If you want a full spectrum product, uh, we can use a subcritical, uh, supercritical CO2 run. So it's about customizing that. And now that we have that kind of platform today, it's about actually now pushing that product forward. So now that we have the hydrocarbon, we're the only one in Canada licensed with hydrocarbon in Canada today. It took us two years to get, we had to get reinforced, reinforced concrete, had a bomb, like it's really a bomb proof room, wow. fire suppression systems, uh, HVAC system. It took us a long time to get to where we are. Now it's okay, we already have that, let's launch the best product for our customer. And uh, we actually are building out a new facility right next door that'll be online in the first half of 2020. And that'll uh, really kickstart us uh, on that front to even a greater degree than we are today. That's fantastic. Now, there's a lot of competition right now in the cannabis sector, but you guys have really risen to the top. What's your secret? Like, uh, how are you guys doing that? Like, so many companies are struggling. So many companies are losing money. So many companies are struggling with profitability. But you guys have risen to the top in a very short period of time. Is there a secret to your sauce? Is it because you guys have a better product? Is it because you guys have strong management? Is it a combination of both? 
What do you think? You know, I think it's a bit of everything. I think uh, if you look at the core team that we have, uh, I, I think the, the extraction expertise, I say 100 years of cannabis extraction expertise, but that has built the base of our business model. And it's about the focus and reinvesting back into what you're good at and further developing those capabilities. And I think we've done a great job of that. And, and this year, what I look forward to is actually putting those products in the marketplace. So if you look at profitability and everything else, if you're building a whole bunch of things, and as an industry, my background's in portfolio management, I've launched one of the first cannabis mandates in, in Canada. And if you look there, we didn't have it. So they'd be like, we have to build it from scratch, Greenfield, and spend $100 million here, now we're gonna go into retail. We didn't do that. We focused on one thing. And if you look at the profitability on that, the reason we are profitable is because we weren't spending so much. We just wanted to be good at one thing. And I, I think from a theme for us, for investors to relate on this year, is look at cash flow. I think investors have still been looking at revenue, and I think that's why we're trading still at uh, a five times EVD EBITDA multiple for analyst expectations next year, is because everyone's been focused on revenue. For this year, I encourage investors to benchmark us on uh, net income and cash flow. And I think the only reason why they're focused on revenue is most companies don't have any income. They don't have any net income. So what are you going to look at, right? Right. And, and I think as we grow in an industry, we got to remember that, like, uh, I always look for my PM days is that 95% of all investors haven't invested in this market yet because Correct. either it's not big enough or it's too risky. And as we get cash flow and as we have real businesses that are running and what we try to do is get two to five year contracts so we have that visibility and revenue in EBITDA. So as those come online, I think we're a great vehicle uh, for the long term with a, a management team and an overall uh, corporate structure that is focused and uh, really putting the investors uh, in the, in the front. And that's why we initiated an NCIB. Uh, I think we're the first cannabis company to do that. We're cash flow positive today. We have lots of cash in the balance sheet. We can now actually uh, make sure that we're putting our investors first. Now, there's something really big coming, and that's legalization in America. One of, uh, I, I put out, a, I, I told my community on Telegram, hey, we're going to be interviewing Balance. They want to know, are you guys looking into America? So, so, so we're looking at it very closely. Uh, I think from an opportunity standpoint, we've obviously looked at the CBD market and everything else. We still think the best opportunity, the platform, we're the largest third party uh, extraction and white label manufacturer. And for brands that haven't come in the industry, they look at us and, and say, I think we're a great target for doing that. So as long as we see like CPG and Fortune 500 companies that are looking to get in this industry, I think we're well positioned. And what, what they, what conversations, if you have conversations with them, they're saying, are you in the US? And as, if you say yes, right, they're saying, oh, we don't want to deal with you because it's federally legal, right? right. So we want to focus on, again, focus is key for us and focus on executing on Canada, contracts we have, and then building out a base. And, and we are monitoring it as soon as uh, more regulations come out on the CBD side and the THC side, we would look to go there. Smart, I mean, why? Why rush it, right? You've seen what's happened with a lot of companies that have tried to go too quickly, and they're struggling, right? We've seen Aurora have problems. Today, an analyst gave him a dollar fifty estimate, like Bank of America gave him a dollar fifty price estimate. So, I mean, obviously, the stock's been struggling because they're getting a lot of negative downgrades. You guys have been leading the pack, and you guys have done a really good job. Now, for investors that are watching, we've got investors in sixty countries worldwide. We get over. 11,000 hours of watch time a month on Rich TV Live alone. They love watching and learning about cannabis companies specifically. What do you want to tell the investors that are watching all over the world? What can they anticipate? What they can expect? Why would they be interested in investing in balance? So, so as a sector in Canada, like I, I think we can say that it was a, a tough year for the space. Yes, um, but what we're seeing from our customers is really innovative products. And you're finally seeing these 2.0 products on the shelves. We've, we've made products and yes. our customers now have them on the shelves and they are selling. And, and I think what you're gonna see is a continued trend. And if you look at even just a macro level, in Canada, we had $129 million in retail monthly sales in October, right? So to annualize, that's over $1.5 billion, right? So if you look at like what, we're, what we've come in such a short period of time, it's good. And what we don't have is we don't have a lot of retail stores, they're coming, and we just launched 2.0 products. So if you look at the overall market size, like you can really see this year being $2.5 billion in sales, another billion dollars up for grabs. Absolutely. So the fundamentals, the long term of the industry are there. It's now just how are people executing underneath it. And what we're seeing from our customers is that I think the tide is turning and there's gonna be some really cool products on the shelves. And uh, all I have to say is you just gotta have to wait and see them in the next few weeks. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a So yeah, so I think Valens, for me, Valens is one of the best.
you know. Aurora's down 6% right now, battling between $1.99 and $2. Doesn't look like it's going to break this channel. Looks like it's going to stay in this channel for the rest of the day. Unless something weird happens here. We're going to watch it. We're going to just watch it. We got uh, 33 minutes left in the market. And we're going to watch it till the end. Let's see what happens. But it's uh, just another bad day for Aurora and the stock. That's for sure. And a lot of people have got rumors around talking about how their revenue is going to be bad. So that could be weighing very heavily on market makers, institutions, lawsuits flying around everywhere now for people wanting anyone that's down a million bucks. Give us a call because the stock's down 80%. It's crazy, man. Very, very crazy time right now in the cannabis sector. Yeah, Valens, you definitely want to position yourself. Now, if we look at the overall markets and we look at what is popping, GMPX was up early, like huge. It is retracting now up 208%. CSS still up 99%. Fuel cell energy up 23%. Vivo cannabis having a breakout day up 12%. Wow. Virgin Galactic Holdings, SPCE up 10.74%. It went as high as 1760. Wow. Insane. Is it daily? Uh, so the lowest was uh, 1621, the highest 1670, 1760, sorry. And we're currently at 1732. Uh, this spaceship is just wow. Let's take a look at SPC. Virgin Galactic Holdings Inc. is a vertically integrated aerospace company pioneering human spaceflight for private individuals and researchers. Virgin Galactic Holdings Inc., formerly known as Social Capital Hedosophia, is based in New York. These guys are just flying. So what, they only have 82 million share? Interesting. Wow. 69 million shares issued outstanding. Oh, this thing's a rocket ship. This is a complete and utter rocket ship. My goodness. 69 million shares. That's tight. That's very tight. One billion dollar market cap. And then there's Neo up ten point two eight per cent. The Asian Tesla. 
been as low as $1.19, been as high as $10.64, currently right in the middle, kind of, 5 bucks. Kind of a scary spot. You could lose on the way down, you could make on the way up. Very hard to tell what's going to happen with NEO. It's been a very crazy ride. Tesla, though, they just look like they're going higher. Look at that. Tesla's crazy. Look at that one month chart. That's beautiful. Three month chart's beautiful. Just steady growth. It's climbing every day. Melting up. Just market melting up. It's crazy. Hey man, if you can get Aurora at these prices, these prices are a gift. Let's be honest. These prices will not last. Yeah, we could go a little bit lower, but the upside, like the downside is maybe what, 25%? Maybe 50%? The upside is three to 400%, if not more. Sheldon Snow says, I have Kronos, Labs, and Valens inside my TFSA. Great picks. Great pick, Sheldon. I think you're doing quite well with those picks. You got three of the best right there. Can't get much better than that. Those are three companies that I believe are just going to keep getting bigger and keep getting better. And Kronos clearly has a ton of money, so... That's always really good when you have money in the bank, considering so many of your peers don't. So they can come in and save the day. They can come in and acquire companies. They can essentially buy their way to the top. Kronos Group has 348 million shares issued and outstanding a market cap just under three billion headquartered in Toronto Aurora is back to two now back to 199 it's just trading in that channel between 199 and two dollars if I look at the one day range you can see it's just in this channel where it's been for I don't know, a few hours. It's been in this channel for a few hours. So it's going to finish the day here, most likely. Something crazy could happen at the end here, but 26 minutes. It's definitely possible, but it's been stuck here in this channel for some reason. Just stuck here. Uh, about half an hour. Stuck here for half an hour. Hasn't made a move. Wow. It went as low as 194 today. I did not know that. Wow. 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 So that was the low of the day. And the high of the day. High of the day is what? What is that? 216 was the high of the day. And 194 is the low of the day. And we're at 199 right now. See how the bands are pretty tight between 2 and 198? It's just not going to let it leave this range. It's going to stay in this range. I agree with you, Sheldon, about the dividends. You definitely want companies that have so much money they can afford dividends. If they're paying out dividends and losing money, then that's usually a recipe for disaster. 
companies will do that just to attract investors and then to try to get them not to sell. Because unless you hold your dividends, you're not going to receive your dividends. So one of the ways that companies attract investors is by offering dividends. So I think it's important that we look at all investing opportunities and typically the companies that are the biggest companies like banks offer dividends because they want to attract investors. It looks like Aurora is just going to stay in this channel for the rest of the day. And everything else is looking pretty red. A lot of red. Neo. Wow. Neo is flying. So it hit a high of 521, it's currently at 517, and it hit a low of 488. Vivo Cannabis having a nice day, up 13%, trying to get out of this region and trying to get back to respectability, despite the fact that they have fallen so mightily. They've been as low as 19 cents. So quietly, these guys have jumped up 100% from their bottom. Vivo was at 19 cents. It's already jumped up 100% from their bottom. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Starting to see this happen more and more with companies. And that's a very good sign for the sector. We need more of that. This is marijuana index. Yeah, there's like nothing green. Wow. Lots and lots of red. Indus Holdings. Mind you, there's very, very little share volume. Almost nothing green today. Lots and lots of red. And it's everywhere. And this is the reason. The coronavirus. The coronavirus get to know this this is the new weapon that is attacking the stock market well the reason why labs is so heavily shorted is because it was really high up so it's got under attack Yeah, I have no idea. Sprutley's been very, very quiet.
So it's saying here that the short interest is 2.31 million shares, but I don't think that that's right. I think it's being shorted way more than that. Does anybody have any other short information regarding Metafarm Labs? Because I'm seeing that they're being shorted 2,310,000 shares, but I'm not sure. Doesn't seem like that's a lot. That's only 2%. So. Virgin Galactic Holdings up 10.99%. And then we go back down to Aurora again. Looks like they fought their way back to $2. Will they maintain this? Oh, back to one ninety nine seven. dollars Doesn't want to hold two bucks. $2 is a very important number. It's a mental barrier. Will we be able to break this $2 or will we hold $2? It's like a fight and a war between the bears and the bulls. The people that are bearish are shorting it. The people that are bullish are buying it. And it's a war between who's got more buying pressure and who's got more selling pressure. And today there's been more selling than buying. That's why we're down 6.5%. So it's a tough day in the markets due to the coronavirus that is kind of subduing the markets today. The short ETF, the marijuana short ETF, might be a good play right now. If cannabis stocks keep going down, um, could see this go back up to maybe $39. If we have another, for whatever reason, if we have another crash in the cannabis sector, I wouldn't be surprised to see this go back up to $40. I'm not suggesting that's going to happen, but there's always a possibility. There's also a possibility that it goes down. And it goes back to low levels. It's definitely a possibility as well. Right now, indicators are pointing up. So this is very bullish for the HMJI. Tesla is still going, folks, at $547. This is the slump buster. Just happened to be my number one pick for January 2020. And they have not disappointed. I had people say to me, why didn't you make Aurora your number one pick? Well, this is why. Shorts, selling pressure. Anybody who's shorting Tesla is getting obliterated. Peter Peter says, I should have go short, but no, I'm long. Cannabis, when's resurrection, Rich? Man, your guess is as good as mine at this point. Who knows? Now we got to deal with the coronavirus, you know, throw that into the mix. You know, we got um, shorters using tactics of lawsuits against companies. Companies' press releases are just filled with lawsuits, especially Aurora Cannabis. So they're completely under attack. It's an assault. And... Clearly, Aurora is not capable of managing it very well. Why isn't shorting illegal? Well, because shorting gives you the ability to make money up and down. If you think a stock's going to go down, you can short it. So shorting is actually good for us because it gives us the ability to make money up and down.
Alex Castillo says there's nothing illegal about borrowing shares, selling them, and then buying them back at a lower price if the price goes further down. Yeah, I think that uh, it gives us the ability to make money up and down. So that's why it's a good thing that we have it. But I don't like the tactics that people use in order to force the market down. Lawsuits. Outing people. Talking about their past. It's straight dirty. Our star says maybe three to six months more. Depression stage, a.k.a. accumulation stage. I don't know. I don't know. I'm hoping that we can turn this thing around and turn it around soon. We've been waiting long enough. We had a good week last week. Now we're dealing with a coronavirus. So there's always something. Seems as though there's always something. And that something always seems to hold us down and be a hindrance and be a nuisance to us all. <laughs> so unfortunately, this is a deadly virus. And that's what's going around in the news. And when people get scared, they sell their stock and they get into cash. So that's clearly what's happening right now because look at Market Watch. It's the first thing you see. And as you can see, the market is red. Yeah, take, ain't nothing wrong with taking your money and running, man. Stay in cash. These markets are very scary. Nobody really truly knows where anything's going to go. Be very, very careful. Aurora is holding at that $199 to $2 range. And I've already predicted I think it's going to finish around that number. Seems as though it's trading in a channel where it doesn't want to leave. And it's been there for half an hour. Look at that. It's just trading straight, sideways. Bouncing between $199, $2. $199, $2. $199, $2. $2. It's just being held in this channel. Weird. Looks like that's where it's going to finish. So somebody wants it to be down 6.34% today, apparently, unless something crazy happens here in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, the last time I seen this is in uh, cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies did the same thing. They were down for longer. They were down over a year. So if you see the five-year chart, you can see that cryptos hit like crazy highs in December of 2017. And then they came down for a period of hit their bottom in February of 2019. So it was a full 15 months of red and then skyrocket. So it went from... 3,000, yeah, 3,000 all the way to 13,000. Once it hit the bottom, it literally, wow, it even, yeah, 3,000. And then literally within five months, it went up to 13,000. So you would have made three times your money. You would have made a nice multiple buying Bitcoin at that bottom. The question is, are the cannabis stocks at the bottom or are they going to go lower? As you can see, Aurora is just trading in this channel and it doesn't want to move. It's stuck in this channel. It's just trading sideways. And it doesn't seem to want to move. Yeah, Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency that I would even 
be interested in holding. I wouldn't hold any other coin, but I'll hold Bitcoin. That's the only one. All the rest are very, very volatile as far as I'm concerned. Wow, zoom away travel, creating a buying opportunity at seven cent. Interesting. Labs creating a buying opportunity at three seventy nine. Clearly, the shorting has not stopped. Sundial, after being up five percent, is down three percent, having a high of three eighty eight today. Open at 365 and now at 335. Is this a buying opportunity? Interesting. When is high as 388, eh? Before it came down. Wow. It's a big swing. You know, despite all that, look who's going up. Balance. <laughs> While everybody else is struggling, the guys that keep going up is balance. Isn't that funny? Oh, yeah. Namaste. Really? Look at Namaste. Hey, Namaste. So I brought you guys this pick a week ago. Let's take a look. Yeah, 39 cents to 51 cents. So since I brought this pick, I believe it was at 38 cents the day I did the video actually, but anyways, we've seen a nice move up. And I made a prediction that I think that they're, they will be back to a dollar. So stay tuned to Namaste because I really like them and I think that they have a great future. I mean, they have some great products like Pineapple Express and Canmart and Chocolat. So as long as they continue to acquire these assets, they'll be okay. Oh, wow. Tesla just keeps going. Tesla just recently hit $548.52. Right now at $547.90. Wow. 94 cents. Crazy. Wow, Tesla is just ripping it. Balance indicators are very bullish right now. And so is Kush Bottles. But Kush Bottles is up 4%. Indicators are popping up. And if we go and look at Aurora, we'll see that Aurora is back between this channel here that it's been trading in. $1.99 and $2 all day. Stuck there. I don't know. I've never watched his channel. Should you buy 150 shares of Tesla? I don't know. That's up to you. That's up to you. I can't tell you what to do, but I think that Tesla was a great buy when I was telling everyone about it at 322 months ago. And like chasing it now is crazy, but I mean, look, it's still going. I mean, it's one of the few stocks that hasn't been affected regardless of what happens in the world. It's like the recession proof. It's crazy. So, you know, if you want your stock to do well, just change the world. It's working for Tesla. Elon Musk is a genius. Virgin Galactic Holdings Space. Having a nice day. 
and Neo flying right at the close here at 522. Uh, today's just one day. I wouldn't be too concerned. How you doing, Anthony? We are just watching the markets at the close. A red day and not a good day for Aurora Cannabis. Down 6%. The overall markets are red, as you can see. Everybody is talking about the coronavirus and how it has spread through U.S. stocks. This is the news and the reason why we are currently red. closing bell here right at the closing bell hey man my pleasure man there's so many ways to make money guys we can make money up we can make money down we can trade forex we can trade currencies we can trade indexes we can buy real estate so the whole key is to diversify as an investor, the key is to diversify and invest in the best. When you invest in the best, you give yourself the best chance to win because the best is blessed. Aurora Cannabis finishing off at one, oh, 201. Look at that green candle. Look at that little sneaky green candle. Oh, it came back down. Oh, it was a tease. It was a tease. I saw it. Did you see it? Oh, man. I saw this green candle. Then it came right back down. Wow. It's like it finished at 199. I wanted to make sure it was under two bucks. <laughs> wow. This is Canopy Growth. See if ACB does any after hours trading here. Yeah, Avon's one of my picks. I like them a lot. Let's take a look at Avon. I don't know why they don't got him here. Weird. Oh, there we go. Yeah, weird. Why does it say zero? Delisted. Odd. I don't understand that. So our cannabis officially finished at a dollar ninety nine in the U.S. Wow. So there it is. Rough day for Aurora cannabis, lowest since two thousand seventeen. If you like this video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere. Love to know what you guys think about Aurora cannabis down six percent and the lowest now it has traded since two thousand and seventeen. Is this a buying opportunity? Would you buy this? Would you stay away from this? Love to know what you guys think. Love to know your opinion. Obviously, Aurora is too big to fail. We've seen them way, way higher 
in the last three years, they've always breached $10. I don't think that this year will be any different. The upside from here is absolutely tremendous. For them to go up to $10 plus, we would see, you know, at $9.89, you're up 261%. Like, that's incredible. So, I think it happens. Do I think Pasha is bankrupt? I don't think so. Wow, Namaste closed strong, eh? Holy smokes. Yeah, Namaste. Great call. Great call in Namaste. Wow. Beautiful five-day chart. And now at 52 cents, up 9.47 cents. After I told you guys when it was at 38 cents that I thought that they were a good buy. And bam. Since then, all we've seen is they've gone higher. Literally, it was the day right there. Bam. There it is. Boom. So if you got in at 36 cents, you could have made like huge returns here on Namaste. See how it's just trending up right now? This is very bullish for Namaste. Like, think it's going to go higher what do you guys think Netflix after hours is moving Let's see thank you guys for your picks I appreciate it man I love this so Netflix is down after hours might be creating a buying opportunity for Netflix Oh, Tesla is down after hours. Looks like Aurora is unchanged after hours. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Let's take a look at Rivers. One forty three down four point six seven percent. So yeah, a lot of stocks in the cannabis sector down today. And overall the markets are red due to the corona virus that has killed six people in Asia. Three hundred have been fallen ill, and now there's concerns that it is spreading all over the world. And this is what is hurting the markets today. Thank you for watching. If you're not winning, you're not watching. This is your boy Rich from Rich TV Live. And I'm out. Peace. ACV, man. ACV. Taking it on the chin. Lowest prices since 2017 on ACV, guys. Peace.